All right. I, uh, Mayor Matt Girding, call the March 18th, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Here. Vincent. Here. Gibson. Here. Parody Catanzaro. Here. Misho. Here. Witham. Here. Goodwin. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. Councilor Witham will lead the council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is agenda item three, which is recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. Uh, this meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on the agenda are scheduled public hearings. Uh, I'd like to note that there was a slight oversight and error in tonight's agenda, so the printed agendas you all have do not show that there is a public hearing, but there is in fact a public hearing tonight for resolution uh, 3824. So I'd just like to amend the agenda to reflect that. Um, it was in fact posted on the city website and we did the proper um, you know, notifications in advance of that. Um, so it's just a slight error in the agenda. Uh, but yes, there is a public hearing tonight for resolution 38-24 which is a city council vote to authorize a bond to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project, which would allow the city to enter into a bond agreement not to exceed $2,367,256 for the construction of the Complete Streets project on Constitutional Way. So I'll open the public hearing for that. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight about Resolution 38-24? Anybody who wishes to speak? the public hearing for resolution 38-24. All right, seeing as there are none, I will close the public hearing for resolution 38-24. I'll move us to agenda item five, which is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Please come on up if you do. Yes, oh, we got one, we got two. We'll start, we got a woman coming up. Thank you so much. So just please state your name and the ward you live in if you live here in Summersworth. Say, my name is Shonda Jerwin, and oh. I am proud I'm sorry to interrupt you. I apologize. Can you just make sure that the green button is on on that mic? So it's just right on, oh, right in above you. There's a stem, see, right oh, on there. There we go. All right, if you wouldn't mind just restating that, I apologize to. No, you're fine. My that. name's Shonda Jerwin. I live in Summersworth at Seven and a Half Prospect Street. Thank you. <laughs> and I come here first and foremost as a proud addict in recovery. I speak on behalf of the homeless community that we see. They're homeless, they have nowhere to go. I was a member of this exact community. I was homeless right along with them for 13 years. A lot of people think that going to rehab is the answer. A lot of people think it's a choice, but it's not. Unless you've lived it, you have no idea what it's like to claw your way out. Going to rehab is just a small piece. If you think of systems thinking, it's no different than a laptop taken apart. They're just components, they're just parts. Put it together, that is a laptop. It's no longer just parts. Rehab is just a part. A more significant part is a safe place to lay your head at night. What's the point in going to treatment if you have nothing to come back to? I was a member of the drug court community very broken system in my opinion. I ended up doing my time anyway. You wanna know why? Because I would go to treatment and I would come back and I would have nowhere to go. What's the point in being sober if you're gonna be outside anyway? If there's no place to go. They're trying to get their lives back. They are human, we are human. 
they deserve the same amount that we all do. Just because when people aren't addicts doesn't mean they don't deserve that, right? If it wasn't for people in my life, like Amy and Milena, that sat there and came into my life and supported me and gave me purpose and gave me a reason to live, I would probably be dead right now. That's just the reality. We are denying humans the right to have a place to go. You, no, like I'm not trying to be rude, but you guys push them into the woods and then you push them out of the woods. The police go into the woods, destroy their sites, and then complain that we spend too much money on incarceration. We spend too much money sending our police into the woods. We spend too much money dealing with people being high out in public. Well, how do you fix that? At the shelter this year, we saved so many lives. The police were no longer going into woods. They were actually doing their jobs in protecting the community. Well, we protected and took care of what people like to see as a drain on the society, a drain on our system. But they're not. They're sick people. They're not bad people. They're sick people that need to get well. They're good people that need help. First and foremost, they need a place to be. That solves so many issues. One of the biggest issues, let's, let's look at the, the news lately. Two girls, both been missing since January. Since January, just found one dead in Dover in the woods. One de found dead in Barnstead, not in her car, but in the woods by her car. Like, is that not enough for us to be like, oh my God, we need to do something. These girls were stuck out dead in the woods. No one knew, freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing. That's inhumane. Nobody deserves a death like that. We have the power to change it. I'm not trying to be rude, but I just heard someone, you guys say $2 million on roads? The roads are drivable, guys. They're, they're, they are drivable. These people, they have nothing. And we complain that they pitch six tents on Will and Property. Well, what are you guys going to do when the shelter closes and there's hundreds of tents everywhere else and your police, are, instead of doing their actual job, are now trudging through the woods? Like, what are we going to do then when we find more dead bodies in the woods? Are we just going to stuff our head in the sand and act like it doesn't exist? Because it does exist. It's not going away. I worked at the shelter last year with SOS. We had 38 to 40 people average a night. This year we pull average 90 to over 100. And those numbers are just going to keep going up. We need to give them the most basic necessities to be able to get their lives back. Just this year, we've been able to get countless people into treatment and onto housing lists from within the shelter. What the biggest point here is what stability and people like Amy and Milena and Kali's home team gave me in my life was I get to sit here and say that I'm almost two years sober. I get to sit here and say that I am a CRSW. I get to sit here and say that I work at Turning Point helping countless addicts find recovery. I'm a sponsor to multiple women. I'm also getting my bachelor's in psychology and counseling with a special focus on addiction, and I maintain a 4.0 GPA. That's what stability gave me because I went to rehab. I went to many rehabs, and I relapsed every single time I didn't have a place to go. You think drug court cared? When I was sleeping on the ground behind the treatment facility that I was at, just because I was that dedicated to my recovery, they didn't care. They let me sleep outside and then pulled me back to Stratford County. And the moment that I made a mistake and used, thrown right back in jail. That fixes absolutely nothing. We could solve so many problems by just giving them one place to be saves you guys headache, saves the police from running all over the place, saves money on incarceration rates. We have the power to do that. We have the power to make it so they have a life just like mine, just like countless other people that I see 
that have their life back. There's not enough sober living out there to help them all. And they're not all addicts. Some of them are just people that got pushed out of their houses because the rates went up. I mean, just my mother alone, she's not an addict. She lived in the same apartment for 10 years in Rochester, New Hampshire. And out of nowhere, her rent went from 750 to 1600 and she had to leave. That's sad. People that are old and on Social Security or disability that are handicapped, veterans that have lived in their homes for multiple years, for decades, living at the Will and Warming Shelter. Women that are CNAs, that are teachers, living in a shelter, those people matter too, just like the addicts. We have the power to make that difference. We have the power to make that change and to help many people. We pledge allegiance to a flag. Well, we're not doing this country any, any service by not caring about every single member of our community, not just the ones that we look to see as productive tax-paying members of society. Because these people could be, but pain, hurt, guilt, shame, being cast out, guess what? That keeps us in addiction. If you feel like nobody cares, that keeps you in addiction. I teach this every day. I learn this every day in school. So I come to you as one of them. Not all the things that I have, but at the basic point, I am an addict, and I will always be an addict, but I am an addict in recovery because I have stability. Let's be a part of that change. Let's make that change possible for these people because guess what? Just by us loving on them this year, I mean, last year I was able to get two or three people into treatment. We've gotten way more than that done way more service. We can continue to do more. We just have to do it. And I, I mean, I'm sorry, I did not stand up for the public discussion about the $2 million, but I definitely plan on bringing it up because if we can put $2 million into our roads, we can put money into giving these people a place to live year round. The choice is yours. If you guys can go to bed at night and think about two dead girls in the woods for over two months, and that doesn't bother you, then I'm sorry. That doesn't, that doesn't speak very well. But think about when you go to bed at night and you're saying, oh, it's too, too warm for a shelter to open, and you're sitting in your nice, comfortable room. Think about when you're cold, how you turn the heat up. Think about if you're hungry, you walk to the fridge and you get something to eat. If you're thirsty, you turn on a faucet. These people have none of that. Absolutely none of that. So why would they want to be different? Why would they want to change? I wouldn't want to change because I didn't change until I had those things. So please, help these people. Help them come to the side of life that I was able to find through beautiful human beings like all the ones sitting in that back row right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work you do. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak tonight? Yes, we have a gentleman here. We'll have him come up, and then we'll have you. Thank you. Again, if you wouldn't mind, please say your name and the ward you live in in the city. Good evening. I'm Art Rosbury Yoder. I uh, live at 21 Shore Road. I've been a resident here, a citizen of Summersworth since uh, spring of 2017. And um, it's my first opportunity to come say something. Just been basically coasting along, but I've had a lot of good experiences here, and I wanted to take the opportunity to come and say a couple of thank yous to some folks in the city and about some things of the city. Uh, I acknowledge the lady that was uh, before me, and I have the same concerns she does. I certainly welcome her comments. Um, and at the same time, I'd like to say something specific about a few people. I had the opportunity uh, yesterday to make my first visit to the Summersworth Museum. Um, I can't imagine why I wasted all those years in between and not, didn't take that opportunity because it is one of the most incredible museums that I've been in ever. 
It's well organized. There's so much material there about the history and the culture of Summersworth. It's amazing, especially for its size and for the fact that it's basically run by volunteers. Uh, I, I certainly encourage anyone who's never been there, take a moment on Sunday, go see the museum. It's, you'll, you'll be amazed at what you could learn about the city and how, how just, just a few people can make so much difference by keeping that organized and doing such a good job uh, of it. Second thing, um, I'd like to thank the folks who work in the city hall, not you people, but the people, you know, the, the people who work here, not, not that you don't work, but I'm talking about the people in, in the offices, in the, in the clerks, and all the people who do the daily work. I've been in the, in the city hall a number of times over the years for this, that, and the other. I've never had a bad experience. I've never had a nasty attitude. I've never had anybody be unpleasant. Uh, I've always had a good, helpful, wonderful experience, and I'm pleased at that. I came here from New Jersey, and while in general, the folks in the towns there were pretty good, it wasn't without some, some grief on occasion, some attitude. Never experienced that here. Even when I had some concerns or some complaints, everybody handled it really well. In particular, I'd like to uh, single out Shane Conlon, your uh, code enforcement officer. I've had occasion in the last year or so to be working with him on an issue, and sometimes I've been a little angry or a little upset. He's always calmed me down. He's handled my concern very very carefully, very thoughtfully. He's always answered my questions. He's always gotten back to me. Um, because I've had so much more of an experience with him, I want to point out that he has done an excellent job uh, of code enforcement. It's a difficult job because He's the person that goes out and says, you're in violation. you got to change that. People don't like to hear that, and they, uh, it makes them upset. He handles that, I think, in an admirable way. He's got a great attitude and a great manner uh, of handling it. And I just wanted to say congratulations, Shane. You're one of the best city employees I've ever met, and I really appreciate uh, what he's doing for you and for the city and for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Anybody else wish to speak tonight? Yes, we have another gentleman in the back. Come on up. And again, like before, please state your name and the ward in which you live in. Thank you. I'd just like to second what he said. Everybody's been super nice. I moved here late in last year. Uh, my name's Nathaniel Moore. I'm a CRSW, and um, I'm a resident at 7 and a half Prospect Street. Um, so honorable members of the Summersboro City Council. I am here uh, to advocate for the Will and Warming Shelter having a continuum of care and to rally support for the excellent management of Carly's home team and providing that care. In my tenure for the 2023 to 2024 season of the Warming Center being open, I have been a part of an amazing team that has provided multiple wraparound resources and case management that has had a lasting impact on the homeless population of Stratford County, including Summersworth, guys. There has been multiple agencies that have been involved in providing these services, including the Goodwin Mobile Health Unit, UNH Nurses and Training, the Dover Welfare Office, the Summersworth Welfare Office, the Rochester Welfare, Welfare Office, CAP, Community Partners, SOS, Working Fields, and other various esteemed and prestigious organizations in the Tri-City area. This has been an amazing feat to combat the epidemic of homelessness that has been a huge humanitarian issue within our own backyard. There is no cure for homelessness, and with the economy declining and inflation rapidly rising, it's a situation that will only get worse, not better. I'm grateful to all of you who have given your support to help aid this noble endeavor to combat homelessness and to help those who need it the most. There is no community without unity and our community is our heritage and our wealth. The Will and Warming Shelter has had on average 95 people a night for this season. 95 people a night, packed to the gills. I don't know if you, I've seen a lot of you guys down there, that, uh, gratefully, thankfully. Um, 
This is a drastic increase from last season where the average range is between 40 to 60 people, right? So like if we cut that in the middle, it's going to be 50 people a night. That's 40 more people a night than last year. That is a substantial increase, right? The contract that was appropriated by Carly's home team was specifically designed for a maximum of 60 people a night, and the bid was substantially less than the next closest bid, $207,800 uh, $207, was the amount that secured the contract for Carly's home team. The next closest bid was cap, was for 25 people a night, at, uh, with the precise number of 25 people a night, right? at $269,861. So we cut that, as a staff member at Carly's home team, we cut that by over $50,000. Whoa. Not only that, but we're providing services and wraparound care for just about double, right? So, I mean, that speaks to a lot of different things, right? Kylie's home team, uh, and, and I mean, so there were other bids for the contract. Some of them are like way out of the ballpark, right? And uh, I mean, gratefully, we were able to secure the bid, right? Um, we've been open since November 1st, and we're continuing to uphold our end of the contract and continue until April 1st of this year, 2024, hopefully beyond. There's been a 90% increase in the unique individuals attending the warming shelter, meaning that 90 more unique individuals have attended the warming shelter, right? 260 people uniquely have gone there, right? So that means 260 individual characters have gone there this year. Utilized services at the Willand Warming Shelter helped them go from one place to another, given them wraparound services, given them a continuum of care, a warm place to rest their head at night. This is just giving contrast to the situation that's at hand, right? So let me just give you a couple of different figures. Uh, CAP had contracts with 16 hotels and motels in the Tri-City area from 2021 to 2023, serving 500 individuals, which burned up most, if not all, of the opiate abatement money, right? Which was uh, extensively, like, providing a lot of shelter for the homeless population that ended in 2023, right? So now we're past the fiscal year, and we're not providing those resources to the, to the homeless population. So, I mean, it's kind of no wonder that the homeless population has been rising. I mean, granted with the inflation of the dollar and things like that, but of course, like when the opiate abatement money stopped, well, that's when the homeless population started rising again. And so we are operating on a budget that has been graciously granted from Summersworth, Dover, and Rochester, respectively. CAP had previously proposed a seasonal shelter that would serve as a bridge between the present and the opening of the shelter in the winter season. I would like to get behind that initiative, and I'm hoping to garner support for that, specifically because of the rising increase, the trend that is happening with the homeless population of the Tri-City area. So not only that, but <laughs> there's been much debate and rhetoric surrounding this, right? Um, I most recently attended the uh, county commissioner's meeting, which was a closed meeting, uh, attending a staff of Carly's home team. Being open more days than the previous year, with more people being served than the contract was proposed for, the numbers came in under budget. Let's not lose sight of that. As of 3-11, March 11th, Carly's home team and the Willing Warm Willand Warming Shelter were in the ballpark of $25,000 under budget. We are on par to make sure that our numbers are going to stay under that. This speaks to me of excellent management, excellent budgeting, and excellent allocation. Way to go, Amy and Milena. Let's go. My hope is that you will support Carly's home team in continuing, provi continuing to provide the much needed services to the homeless and needy population. I implore you to look at how we can find an amicable solution I would humbly request that you look into a permanent shelter that can provide vital case management and wraparound services where it's needed the most. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. All right. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Anybody else? 
Sure. Yeah, come on up if you'd like. Absolutely. <coughs> I know we know you, but if you wouldn't, also mind still doing the name. Oh, Amy Malone <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Oh, yes. If you um, mind, I'm just bringing this up as a point of order. Sure. I believe both speakers have exceeded the time limit. Ah, that is a flaw of mine that I get too engrossed in what people say that I forget to keep okay. time. So thank you for reminding I'm only me. bringing it up not that I didn't want to hear what they had to say. Certainly. But that if you enforce it at a different time, mm. that's unfair to who may come Certainly. after. Certainly. I appreciate that. Thank you for the heads up. I promise I won't take more than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Amy Malone from Carly's home team, um, and I, I really don't have to speak to a lot of the things because you saw, again, members of the unhoused community at one point and current staff speak truth to stuff that we just can't, you know. Um, but we are at, so we had a state meeting you know, today, every month we go on state meetings to see how all the other counties are doing what they're doing and how we can improve and how make, make sure that we're spending down the state funding so it keeps up, right, local taxes low. Um, and we have seen more than any other um, balance of the state county, two to three times more. So outside of Manchester and Nashua, 279 unique individuals. Um, and that's almost 5,000 bed nights. It's 4,914 bed nights, um, which is how sort of these sort of things are calculated and, and used statistically. Um, we have had 13 people discharged into longer term treatment where those are the rehabilitations for substance use disorder. Um, all 13 of them will come back to this area within the next 30, 60, or 90 days to the same situation they left in, although they are doing their part to try to do what everybody has deemed the next steps, right? To get themselves healthy and say, keep yourself housed as long as possible in the best care. All of these things cost a lot of money. Right. Every time we send somebody to treatment and all of those things, especially if they're not ready, right, and they're just doing it for that basic necessity, that housing aspect, it doesn't last. And, and like Shonda had spoken to, and it doesn't last when you have to come back. So just keeping those in the forefront. Um, we got one person into Riverside. We have another person pending. Um, we've been able to... Um, have both Goodwin Community Health and Volunteers in Medicine come, and um, 37 people have um, got connected with a primary health care provider in the time that we've been there. We gave out over 45 vaccines to vulnerable populations. Um, we are seeing, when you look at the most vulnerable age groups, so to speak, youth and young adults, so 18 to 24 year olds, we have five to eight of them every single night. Um, and then when you look at the vulnerable over 55 plus, that's somewhere between 13 and 20, um, and anywhere between as low as three veterans a night all the way up to, we had, I think, seven or eight one night. Um, we have been able to connect um, almost all of our vets, except for, I think we have four left that currently don't have anywhere to go, but the rest of them, through the VA, through Harbor Homes, through being able to have all of these service providers in. Um, one of the thing that I bragged about this, the Tri-Cities doing and Stratford County doing was allowing us to hold the service provider fair and allowing us to open our doors, doors extra. Um, again, at the state level, like a lot of the other people were like shaking their heads like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, have you come to that space? Um, a lot of those places also have full-time shelters that aren't completely closing um, in a couple weeks. They have maybe their overage, you know, um, but for the majority, they have um, some other spaces. So, but even to them, they thought it was evidence-based and it was innovative. So I just wanna give you all, we got support from all three cities when we asked for that. We're doing another one in March. Um, we are have ex we're utilizing our Sundays that they have allotted us and our extra times on Mondays to have the welfare offices and people come in. Um, our guests are planning a way to say thank you to Summersworth and one of the Sundays that they have so graciously given us till the end of the year is will be utilized for a Summersworth cleanup day with guests 
you know, residents of the shelter um, pitching in with um, a group called Don't Trash Summersworth um, and uh, SOS and some of the other agencies are all like, give us some trash bags and give us some stuff and um, we'll make sure, we've talked to the chief about making sure we're not, we don't go on any private property and get ourselves no trespassed, but to make sure that we're um, saying thank you for hosting us while you can. Um, and still to put pressure on to find something because right April 1st, it's still cold, it's still wet, um, it's still windy. We're pe having people get injured outside in the wind. Um, if you saw my 70 year old vet with the stick through his face the other day, you might have, and I, I think um, Mayor Gertie did meet him actually, and I appreciate you coming um, and sp actually spending time with our humans. I think um, you, you know, you know why we're why we're doing this for them because they they do deserve it so um i think i think that's it like that suggests so thank you for what you've done i really ask you to just push and keep trying and keep sending your mayors and your counselors to roll up their sleeves and help um and to really take a moment or two to speak to the people behind these walls because they're not all what um you might think actually most of them aren't thank you so much I'll try to be quick. <laughs> so um, I, it's come up earlier, the, the six You can just state your name for the record. I'm sorry. Yep, sorry, but Milena Lugo from Carly's home team. Um, the, the tents were obviously a, a, an issue that's been brought up. Um, I just wanted to speak on that a little bit. So we did have the tents behind Willen. Um, it's not something we authorized. It's not something we wanted, but it was a necessity. Um, how that started was we had two of our elderly handicapped guests, one with in a wheelchair with one limb and one who takes care of her that pulls an oxygen tank. Um, they did attempt to get out into the woods in the wheelchair in the wet mud and were unsuccessful. And their only solution to them at the time was to set up a tent behind Willen because to them they're safe, it's flat, they're not getting stuck in the mud and the rain and the wind. And, and then we had, well, another guest say, well, I'm not going to leave these two elderly women who are, in my opinion, in the, the guest said, you know, they're handicapped, they're vulnerable, so I'm going to set up a tent next to them to take care of them and watch out for them while they're sleeping. So now you have two tents. Then you have our, our deaf veteran who says, well, I have nowhere to go. I'm going to set up my tent over here. Someone else sets up a tent to watch out for him. Before you know it, we have six tents. And it's and all of them had some type of medically frail people that were dropped off to us by the various hospitals. People that, I mean, I personally have never tried to push someone's wheelchair through the mud and the muck while I'm pulling my oxygen tank, but I can't even imagine at all what that could possibly be like. And I understand very quickly how it happened because they're, they're a community, they take care of each other. And I personally, it, you might have found me camping out there if it was just those two elderly women and no one else could have taken care of that. You might have found me in a tent nearby or in my car in the parking lot because, I, I mean, they had nowhere to go. So I, I just wanted to, to speak to that because it was so publicized, because it was mentioned here at your last meeting where I didn't say anything, because it was in the newspaper, because it's been on Facebook. And then th those pictures, I just wanted you to see. So two of those pictures are where the tents actually were. We did not clean that area. That was done by the people that were, some of the people that were in those tents. Others were guests. There's pictures of them out there. They asked, hey, can you, we have a, a staff who has a landscaping business. She brought them rakes, leaf floors. They were out there. They, we didn't do it. They did it. And so I just wanted to get that out there because of all of the, it's a mess, there's trash, there's, the, I mean, we walked the mayor around that whole area when he came by, just so, you know, you could see that things that are being portrayed are not actually what happened. So I think that's really, I don't think I have much else. Thank <laughs> but you so much. I just much. want, I mean, they help all the time. They're sweeping, they're... I mean, you can, <laughs> you saw them mm -hmm. cleaning the fridge and mopping and raking I and. Take a trash bag out. Yeah, I mean, someone fixed. <laughs> just this morning, my daughter's car had a piece of plastic. I don't know what it is. I'm not a car person that was hanging down. 
I mentioned it and within, can you get it here? And there's four guys on, laying on the ground on the parking lot trying to fix my car so my daughter doesn't have to drive with the plastic scraping. And I'm like, guys, I can take it. No, 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 you don't need to take it anywhere. <laughs> we'll do it. And they're all under the car today, like fixing it for, you know. It, they help us all the time. They're so, to them, I mean, the longer they're with us, the more they're able to stay, the more they're able to connect with services they wouldn't get. They're trying to pay back to us. And if they can do it by raking or bunging and fixing a piece of plastic on my car, <laughs> I, I mean, they're doing it. They're mopping. They're, I, I can't even take the trash out without 12 people trying to take the bag from me. Like, it's just, they're always helping us all the time. And I just, because of all of the negativity that's out there, I just want you all to know that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? All right. Seeing, oh, are you looking to speak? All right. Seeing as there is none, we will move on to our next agenda item. Uh, that is agenda item six. Uh, approval of the consent calendar. So the chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on March 4th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes. Councilor Gibson? I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Thank you. Councilor Gibson moves that the consent calendar be approved as presented, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Uh, question for the council, is the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. <clears throat> that moves us to agenda item seven, which is comments by city councilors. Yes, Councilor Pepin. Yes, uh, the first lady that got up, and I'm sorry, I didn't, don't remember your name. You, you started me off on the wrong foot right off when you turned around and accused the police department for slashing tents in the area. I know that it's completely off the wall. I know when I heard the article, I've checked into it. All right, our police officers have body cameras on. They're monitored all the time. The cruisers are monitored all the time. They, they know where they are at every friggin' minute of the day. So that bothers me to no heights, to come in and accuse the police department, especially when the police chief stood up here in front of a public safety meeting and they ended up defending your organization to high hurts. Uh, so that, I'm, I'm getting that off of me. As far as, your organization, I have all the faith in the world, and I bless you all for doing the work that you do, all right? My problem is not with the people that have drug problems or the homeless people or whatever. I spent 32 years in the fire service because I care about people, and I still do. I care about them very, very much. My problem is, right now, is that you have built a shelter that people are coming from everywhere to come here. Don't tell me no. Don't shake your head no. I got Summerswood, Dover, and Rochester. I got Portsmouth, which you had, that your report said you had eight people coming in from, from the hospital that was brought me from the hospital. Cape Nettick, Exeter, Duke, Dublin, Nashua, Farmington, and there was some from Maine that I've heard. And one of your reports says that we had 50 people from the city of Summersworth that are homeless. Now, if we are 10 square miles and we have 50 people square uh, homeless, that's a, that's a record. Because that, well, that was more than Dover and Rochester has ever sent. So, and I really don't care where they're coming from because they are homeless. My problem is, is that this is a bigger problem than the city of Summersworth. And the city of Dover and Rochester, and I can't speak for the city for the city of Dover and Rochester, but it's a bigger problem than what Summersworth can solve from the taxpayers. I am looking at the school department came over over a million and a half dollars over the tax cap that we got to try to figure out how we're going to cut their education down. I don't know how we can do this. This is a county. You got people from Rockingham County coming in here, and. It, to me, it is just a bigger problem than what it is. Your facility is, is not big enough for it. The state needs to take a handle on this, and, and Stratford County needs to take a handle on this. This is what my problem is. My problem is not with, your peop with you or, or the homeless people or the drug people. 
My problem is with funding. When you stop taking away from, from our taxpayers' money, from the kids of our education, that's where I have the problem. I have to ans answer to the taxpayers of the city of Summersworth. I have to ans answer to the people that are educated. And I don't mean this, and I see somebody is upset because of what I'm saying. I don't mean to be taking it out on you because it's not you that I'm taking it out with. I'm taking it out on the states, the federal government, the, even the federal government. We'll, we import people from wherever, from, from the border. We're paying them to go to New York City and everything. New York can pay, probably can afford a million dollars a day, but some of what can't. And I guess that's, that's where my problem is. It's, it's not with your organization, so please don't think it's your organization, and it's not the homeless people. It's, it's not that. My problem is, is that there's other people that need to be looking into this, just, and it shouldn't be just stumped on Summersworth and Rochester and Dover. I, I'm sorry for me being upset, but you upset me when you turn around and blame my police department. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to folks in the audience and to city councilors, we should not be engaging in debate. Uh, this is an opportunity for city councilors to express their opinions, uh, just as uh, we had folks from the audience express theirs. So just a reminder to everybody in the room. Uh, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. My fellow councilor beside me here is very compassionate about really helping people. He's been doing it his whole life. Um, and I have to agree um, with him that uh, this is a bigger problem, and I've said it before, than just Summersworth, Dover, and Rochester. That's why I've gone to um, George McGlarris, the county commissioner, and had numerous talks with him about, um, about actually having it to be a county type of, it's a county problem. It, it, it's, a, it's a New Hampshire problem. It's a national problem. But as we're speaking in this region, it's, a, it's Stratford County. This way, um, you don't just have uh, three cities flipping or funding the bill, so to speak. Uh, you know, when you need a court, when you need to go to court, we go to the Stratford County Courthouse. And how that's paid for is that's paid for through the cities and towns. Um, and it's based on the development of the city or town. Uh, if there's a lot of development where there's more people that come into the area, then that's, that one city pays a little bit more to Stratford County. So um, I think that the wheels are in motion to actually uh, get it to be a more of a county type of um, uh, dealing, so to speak. I know that once we started talking about the, um, the nursing home uh, at Stratford County, they were actually going to take the old Riverside and uh, possibly convert it into a homeless shelter. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, but I think, um, just not to lose focus, I really think that this uh, is a county issue, um, which three cities are paying for right now, where it should be, in, in, it, should be it should be 11. I believe there's 11 counties, or 11 cities or towns in Stratford County. Um, you know, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, next up, Councillor Perdy Catanzaro. Thank you. Um, Zandra, I believe your name was. Um, Jonda, thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming and sharing your story and also congratulate you on being two years sober and being such a great example of what can happen when we invest in people and give them the support that they need and the resources that they need. It's amazing. And thank you also for, you know, turning around and pulling people up the ladder behind you because that's, that's really important and that's how we can get it done. Um, I think it's very appropriate that several of you recognize what an amazing job Carly's home team has done at this warming center. Um, I see a lot of leadership. It's really exciting to hear that the warming shelter that we have here in Summersworth is helping to lead the way and share ideas with other counties. Um, the service provider fair that it sounds like other people are taking up that idea. That's incredible. I also want to highlight um, 
that one of you, I believe it was Nathaniel, talked about how much cost cutting this warming center has provided. And I agree with that. And I've heard that uh, talked about before. Um, uh, I think I've mentioned before that working in public health, you, you learn about upfront investment in primary care versus emergency room care, which people generally don't pay back ever. And that's unfortunately always going to come out of the taxpayer dollars. So to have this continuum of care that you have created at this place for so much less than what other um, organizations could do is incredible. Um, I know other uh, folks have shared um, their hesitation to fund this going forward or, um, you know, it's been said that there's, it's a county issue, it's a state issue, it's a national issue. Yes, absolutely. It's also a summer's worth issue. Um, and I would not be in support of ending this without something else to take its place because the, if people have nowhere to go, people have nowhere to go, but that doesn't mean that they disappear. They're still going to be here. They're still going to need services that we can provide. Um, and it makes sense to have all that at a place where professionals who are competent in what these folks need are there to provide and connect them with resources. Um, thank you also to Amy and Melina for sharing some of those statistics of people who've been connected with long-term resources. That's amazing as well. Um, I feel like uh, several times my comments have sort of ended with, well, I don't know what to do then, and I'll be in support of whatever the solution is. And I think, you know, we're kind of all at that point. I, again, I'll reiterate that I would support continuing this and here in the absence of another tangible solution. Um, I agree that the building is not ideal. There's not enough showers. There's not enough restrooms. I know um, other uh, municipal obligations, such as schools, people bring in trailers as extra housing, as extra um, bathrooms, as extra showers. Um, and I can sense discomfort at some people of growing that space in that area, but if not there, then where? Um, people are not gonna disappear and their needs are not gonna disappear. So um, I'm really glad that our mayor is really committed to finding a solution and talking with um, other leaders in the area. I absolutely agree that the county needs to be stepping up and doing more. I don't think that absolves us of doing something. Um, and I was really disappointed to see that um, that nursing house project, which I thought was very promising that there, there could be an available building that was used for transitional housing, that plan was voted down again. And so I don't know how long it would be for something like that to work because they have once again sort of kicked that can and we can't keep passing the buck up and down and whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm in full support of at least continuing this very relatively small investment in what is working really, really well and having huge successes. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to bigger long-term solutions. Thank you. Uh, we'll have Councilor Witham, then Councilor Gibson. Let me start by saying I think I hold my own here in council chambers when it comes to understanding issues uh, that confront the city, whether that's a budget, a project, uh, or any number of things. Uh, I don't hold my own on this issue. I fail miserably. I struggle to understand it. And for that, I apologize. But I tell you honestly that I'm trying to understand it, uh, and it's hard. Um, uh, so let me just start with that. Uh, and I also share that I talk with trepidation on this issue because for whatever reason, uh, the issue has become, I don't know, I'm going to use the word somewhat adversarial. Uh, and that's unfortunate because that doesn't help anybody. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is, and maybe it's just a perception I have, but I have that perception that it's become somewhat adversarial, and we need to move beyond that uh, if we're going to solve any problem. Uh, other counselors have said it's a county issue, it's a state issue, it's a national issue. I don't know whose issue it is. It's an issue. 
I, I can't blame anybody. I can't point a finger anywhere. Uh, if you could, that would help us in solving the problem. But you can't. Uh, the comments tonight, at, at times I felt like I was being scolded. At times I felt I was being thanked. Uh, so uh, I'm equally as confused. Uh, I will say this. I think the Tri-Cities, Summersworth, Dover, and Rochester have done, uh, quite frankly, a, a pretty damn good job, right? We, we've actually put some money towards this issue. Now, we could argue that it's not enough, but I'd contend that if we took a poll of the 230-some-odd cities and towns here in New Hampshire, that the list of communities that put money towards helping the unhoused uh, is pretty damn small. Uh, we're, again, I think we're trying here, right? Is it enough? Probably not, right? But I think we're trying, just like everybody here, right? To solve an issue that uh, I'm not sure where the point to blame, right? Uh, I am met by more frustrations than I am successes, which drives me batty. I like to solve problems. This is not one that I think I can solve, so that's uh, an impediment for sure. But I read about the plan that had sort of been in the works to build a new county nursing home and to take the existing nursing home and develop it into uh, long-term shelter, transitional housing, uh, some combination thereof. That plan had merit. It's a bigger building. It's a sizable building. It's connected with services. It seemed to this guy who's struggling to understand all of this to make a ton of sense. And when I, and Commissioner McGlarris calls it the three-legged stool approach, right? So, uh, you know, we're, we're solving multiple problems. Uh, unfortunately, as I watch this, the stool has been thrown in a fire and it's burning. We're not going to have it, right? Uh, I have zero, zero faith that the county will come through for us. Zero. I used to have faith in county government. I've never really had faith in state government. And I'm not going to go to the national government. That will get me in trouble, right? But I've lost faith in county government now because of this. I still have faith with what we're doing. Where we go, I, I don't know. But... I'm, I'm willing to learn and I'm trying to learn. I know two, three meetings ago I spoke about everything from grocery carts to the porta potties, right? And I get the need for all of those things. And Councillor Goodwin, you talked about how homelessness is messy. I would tend to agree with you. Part of the struggle here, and maybe this is where some of that adversarialism, is that a word? It, it works now. Um, <laughs> is that we may never get the community to embrace this. But we need to get the community to understand and accept what we're trying to do. And things like grocery carts and porta potties and, I don't know, tents on the back lawn create that messiness which gets in the way of the conversation and maybe create some of that adversarialism. I used it twice. It's a word now, right? Um, I don't mean to make light of it. I, I certainly don't, but uh, I'm not sure I've said anything that helps anybody or does anything. I'm just sharing my feelings and maybe more importantly, my frustrations. I'll end there. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Uh, firstly, I want to thank the people that spoke. Um, I understand uh, your desire to find support for what you're doing. Um, I have to be in agreement with what the other councillors have said. Um, Summersworth is doing as well as it can. We have a lot of demands on the funds that we do have. And as Councillor Whittem said, there's a lot of places in New Hampshire that are not doing anything for these folks. And I gotta think it's really comical when Portsmouth is shipping people to Summersworth. Well, not comical, sad. 
I mean, that's a city that's in much better financial state than we are, and they're sending people to us, um, which speaks well to what's being done at the shelter. Um, and again, I don't have an answer. I don't know what we can do, but it needs to be a conversation at the national level and work its way down, like everything else does. <laughs> it starts at the national, goes to the state, to the county, and then guess what? We foot the bill for it. Um, I sympathize with what you're dealing with, and I understand that these folks are distressed, um, and they don't want to be. None of us do. But we can only do what we can do, and I hope everybody really understands that. Um, we will do the best that we can with the resources that we have available to help anybody in this community. And whether it be first responders or us helping support the shelter itself, we'll do what we can as best we can. Um, the mentioning of CAP and hotels, that really bothered me because that is really an idiotic expenditure of money. Um, they could have bought a building and put the people into it and had money left over compared to what they were paying out to hotels. Um, but I guess that's not a conventional solution. Anyways, again, thank you for the people that have spoken, and as Mr. Woodham said, what was that word you used? <laughs> we don't want that to be the situation. Uh, we want to work together with everybody to do the best that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Cameron, and then Councilor Goodman, you can go after. Thank you, Anna. Thank you to all you folks that came up and spoke. And I'm sorry I don't remember your name, but it just goes to show that you can turn your life around with support. And it's sad to think that, you know, like you talked about going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but not having a place to lay your head is very important. And I think we are all trying to do the right thing for everybody, for all the unhoused, and unfortunately it grows, and it's grown over the years, which ultimately has made the facility not big enough for where you need to be and what you need to do. And like everybody else has said, we don't have the answer tonight. We know what the answer is. We need to do something else. There needs to be a bigger facility. There needs to be more space, but where? Where is that going to be? And I'm hoping that in these discussions and the Tri-City Mayors that keep working together with the county will come up with a solution, hopefully in the near future, not 20 years from now, but in the next whatever it's going to take to get where we need to be to help you. Because there are success stories. And I hope each and every one of you that are unhoused can have a success story like her because you all deserve it. You all deserve that. So thank you for sharing what you've shared. And I'm sorry we can't give you a solution tonight, but I know we all want to work for it for you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Goodwin. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd also like to thank the folks for their comments this evening. And uh, I'll start by saying that I am also committed to continuing funding for uh, the warming shelter until a better solution is found or a more permanent solution is found. I said previously that 
Um, you know, let's not uh, for forget what is the baby and what is the bathwater and the situation and the baby is very much your organization and the work that you're doing and um, we should be trying to nurture that and protect that. Um, and the bathwater are the externalities that, um, that come with a very difficult job that is in a context that's under-resourced. <clears throat> and I think for me, the tension in this debate is really coming around a disconnect between um, scope and expectations. And that scope has changed over time given uh, the need, I think, and uh, people may or may not have been inspecting it, and so there's friction happening around that. So I, I definitely think that uh, if and when a contract is renewed, I think I would have particular interest in making sure that we're having that conversation around the scope, around expectations, around trying to manage some of these externalities, you know, to ones that are important, whether it's shopping carts or porta potties, um, to make the uh, organization as successful as it can be in, in less than ideal context that it's currently in, while working simultaneously to advance a permanent solution. I commend the mayor for his focus on this issue. Um, you know, to echo my counselors here, this really is a, a issue that Summersworth is going to need to partner on, ideally at the county level, lacking faith there. Summersworth will probably have to work with our Tri-City partners. Um, so the question is, uh, who, who are we working with? Where is the facility going? What is the scope of that facility? These are all things that have yet to be determined. Um, so it is not going to be an easy process, um, but I, I certainly support that process going, uh, going forward. I know the mayor supports that process going forward, as does many of my fellow counselors. Um, so know that we are, we are thinking about this, that many of us are committed to continuing funding, to further funding, for the mission, working with partners, knowing that we alone as a community are, don't have sufficient resources. Um, but, you know, it's, it's unfortunately not going to move as quickly as any of us would like it to move. That is the uncomfortable truth of it. Um, and I think just back to managing the best of worst worst situation is let's have a conversation around our expectations and how we can manage externalities so that we can both uh, get out of the relationship what we're looking for, um, in your case, providing an essential service, in our case, you know, mitigating uh, potential harms to the community or buyers. So, um, in general, thank you so much for your work, and I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. Other counselors? Yes. Councilor Michu. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Kylie's home team, thank you very much for what you're doing. You're making a big difference. So, keep up the good work. We'll try to do the best we can. Unfortunately, there's only three communities in Stratford County a foot in this whole bill for you guys. Dover, Summersworth, and Rochester. Just to let you know, Stratford County, there are 18 communities here. Three cities that are coughing up all the money. Make sure you guys can do what you can do. But there are other 15 communities in Stratford County I'm coming forward to do nothing. I'm not sure if anybody asked them to do something. Maybe we should. But what I can say is, Please keep doing what you're doing. You're definitely making a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Other counselors who have yet to speak. All right. That will move us on. Where were we? Seven. That brings us to item eight, which is communications. We have none tonight. Uh, item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherized. We also have none. Brings us to item 10, which is the mayor's report. <clears throat> Um, I would first like to announce uh, the winners of the Mayor's Quarterly Art Contest. Folks have been hearing about this since I took office. It's an ex exciting piece. Uh, I have a blank space in my office. We're just waiting for this art to go in. Um, but first, I would like to thank everybody who submitted work to this art contest. Uh, many great submissions. Certainly have a very talented community, which I appreciate. Um, with thoughtful consideration, the Mayor's Commission on Culture, Ethnicity, and the Arts decided at their recent meeting uh, the three winning artists who will have their work displayed in the Mayor's Office throughout the year. So I'd like to congratulate our winners. Uh, first up was Nancy Mitchell for her winning photograph of Owlhead Lighthouse in Owlhead, Maine. Uh, we also had uh, Bertha Robbins uh, for her winning modern art quilt. And uh, lastly, Kyla Yoder for winning her winning uh, throne pottery bowl. So really excited to have these throughout the year. 
Uh, these works will be displayed in the office uh, for a period of three months, uh, starting in April with Nancy Mitchell's photograph. Uh, so feel free to stop by, uh, not only just to say hi to me, uh, but also to check out the great art. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, also would like to update the council on my meeting last week with the fellow Tri-City Mayors and the County Commissioners regarding the Will Ann Warming Center. Uh, it's a very timely topic since this is what we've been talking about tonight. Um, I would first like to inform the council uh, that uh, tents have been removed as we just learned about. Uh, they're no longer present at the property. The occupants of the tents uh, were met with over the period of a few days uh, in coordination with staff at the three cities, uh, Carly's home team, so thank you, and 11 other service providers for the region and provided service and shelter to uh, many of these individuals. Uh, 19 individuals were assisted in total during this outreach. Uh, two were placed in long-term shelters, uh, four connected with treatment and four connected with local welfare offices for services. Uh, nine, however, did decline resources, um, but I would say that this is certainly an extremely successful and compassionate way to provide these individuals with needed resources. So thank you to everyone involved. Um, uh, at the mayor's meeting last week, we heard updates from the staff at Carly's home team on the operations at the Willowland Center um, and discussed plans for the remaining few weeks of the warming center's operations this season. Uh, certainly concerns were raised, many of which we heard tonight, um, but about the closing of the center for the season, particularly those that were, um, there were a number that were not um, uh, within Oh, excuse me, miss, miss, losing my place. Uh, particularly that there would uh, not be enough uh, contact and communication with folks who utilize the shelter as we near the end of March. Uh, and fears that once the shelter closes, we'll lose contact with these folks and they'll uh, no longer be able to have access to services. Um, other concerns were raised regarding constraints within our memorandum of agreement between the three cities, uh, which were certainly noted, uh, such as things as activation temperature, extensions of the contract beyond April 1st, and a number, uh, the number of open days that were allowable. Uh, these concerns, as I mentioned, were noted, but due to the nature of the agreement, could not necessarily be mitigated at this time, but are uh, on our radar as we begin discussing contracts uh, for uh, next winter. Um, and certainly, as we begin planning, um, I am dedicated to listening to these concerns and hoping that we can integrate them in to make for a more comprehensive plan for uh, next year. Um, I went into this meeting looking for solutions that could be reached within the bounds of our agreement um, and noted that Carly's home team has been doing a phenomenal job providing compassionate service to this population and um, has actually, as was also noted tonight, so you guys like stole my report tonight, so thank you, um, come in under budget, which I think is phenomenal. Um, the flexibility in the budget uh, actually opened up the possibility that the center could be open for more days within this month and um, with the hopes of providing more case management and assessment uh, and to prepare individuals for the inevitable closing on April 1st. Um, ideally, we would want as many people as possible directed uh, to services and to be housed prior to closure. And um, in the meeting, I proposed that the shelter would be open every Sunday for the remainder of this month, regardless of the weather, so that fo folks could at minimum shower, do laundry, eat some food, uh, and have eyes on them, and then, you know, hopefully beyond that, uh, receive services and have contact and prepare these folks for the warmer se seasons ahead. Uh, proposal was accepted by the other mayors and the county commissioners, so now uh, we are, uh, the center will be open every Sunday. On top of that, Carly's team requested that they do another, if not potentially two, more days of uh, service at the center, which they talked about tonight. Um, and these will likely be done with uh, in the next coming weeks, I believe held on Mondays, I think. Um, and again, at, uh, the last day of service was extremely successful and provided a tons of resources to these individuals, and I expect the same out of the next few. Um, lastly, in this meeting, many of the stakeholders uh, were in attendance and spoke passionately about ensuring that the topic did not go ignored uh, throughout the warmer months. And I want to reassure everybody here tonight and the council uh, that I plan to continue meeting regularly with the mayors and the county and hopefully the, the stakeholders to ensure that we have a robust plan developed for the fall uh, that is sustainable and better addresses the needs of the community. Um, I'm committed to meeting with stakeholders, uh, learning with them what needs to be done throughout the seacoast in the hopes of identifying gaps that we have in service, uh, areas in which that we can be uh, seeing some improvements for next year, 
uh, and ways to better provide service to these folks. Um, certainly as progress is made, more information is made available. I will update the council and the city uh, at that time. Um, but that was kind of the gist of the meeting. Uh, and I think a lot of it was also captured from what was uh, spoken about tonight. Um, so my next item I'd like to discuss tonight is our 2024-2025 Summer's Worth budget. It is before us tonight under new business. So as is traditionally done, I respectfully request that the council suspend rules when we get to this item in order to have a second reading on the budget tonight. Immediately following the second reading, I again request that the council motion to lay the budget on the table. This will allow the council to then, you know, hear budget presentations at the next meeting, uh, engage in our discussions when we have our budget workshop on the 6th of April, and then be able to pull the budget from the table whenever we are ready to actually act upon it. Um, so again, just to reiterate, we'll hear it in first reading, I request a second reading, and I request it to be laid on the table immediately after. Um, I do also, um, request that when we do in the future remove it from the table that we do it in a, um, a bifurcated process where we start with the school portion of the budget at that time i will be recusing myself from that uh, discussions or any voting uh, related to the school side of the budget and i will leave you in the very capable hands of our deputy deputy mayor uh, with him david with him um, so certainly once that portion is then passed i will step back into my role and then oversee the city portion of the budget. Uh, again, that is further down the road, but I just wanted to at least set expectations at this point so folks are aware uh, when we get to that part. So again, first and foremost tonight, we have uh, the beginning parts of our budget. Um, and so here we go, right into budget season, everybody. Um, my last thing tonight is I actually have a proclamation, which I'm quite excited to award. So I have tonight a proclamation uh, proclaiming that March 2024 is Music in Our Schools Month in the city of Summersworth. So I'm actually gonna invite up our Maplewood and Idlehurst um, music teacher, Mr. Maroney, up to the stand. I'm gonna join him and read the proclamation. This is on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for being here tonight. Thank you. Great to see you. So again, proclamation tonight is proclaiming March 2024 as Music in Our Schools Month in the city of Summersworth. Uh, whereas for more than 30 years, March has been officially designated as na the, by the National Association of Music Education as Music in Our Schools Month, encouraging communities across the nation to focus on music education and whereas music education is part of a well-rounded education for every student as outlined in our National Every Student Su Succeeds Act, and whereas the purpose of this celebration is to raise awareness of the lasting positive impacts of music education on the academic, personal, and professional goals of our students, and whereas music education shapes the way our students understand themselves and the world around them, allowing for a deep engagement with learning, and whereas our music educators Students and community members throughout Summersworth demonstrate the importance of, mu of quality music education programs to the lives of young people. And whereas Summersworth joins our music students, educators, and communities in celebrating the power of music education. Now, therefore, I, Matt Girding, Mayor of the City of Summersworth, New Hampshire, on behalf of the Summersworth City Council, do hereby proclaim March 2024 as Music in Our Schools Month in the City of Summersworth and encourage all citizens to celebrate and acknowledge every day but especially in March, uh, that music education is an essential part of every student's well-rounded education. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I have one for you right there. And then two other music educators were not able to be here, but I will pass those over to you. If you could distribute those, that would be amazing. Yeah, Again, thank you. thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you. Please. Appreciate it. Uh, no report this evening, thank you.
No, I don't. I'm sorry. Again, that concludes my report. We are on to item 11, reports of standing committees, finance committee, chair, council, with them. Apologize. Still no report. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just worth repeating. <laughs> I turned it off before I went. Why did I do that? Um, <laughs> next up, Government Operations Committee, uh, Chairman Mishu. Same as uh, Councilor Witham, no report. Thank you. Next up, Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. N no report. I don't think I, yeah, no report. All right, <laughs> thank you. Next up, Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have no report this evening. Right, wow, look at this. Next up, Public Works and Environment Committee, Chairman Witham. No report, but I would announce that the committee will be meeting next Tuesday afternoon uh, at 3 p.m. All right, thank you. And lastly, Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Cameron. We are meeting Wednesday at 4.30 here. Awesome, <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, next on the agenda is item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees? Yes, Councillor Cameron. Turn my microphone on. Um, the Mayor's Commission on Culture at the Necessity and the Arts met on Wednesday, March 13th, and our first task on the agenda was to pick the artist winners. So we did that as the mayor had announced. It was the photo, it's a quilt, and the pottery. So I was very pleased with the photo because it was a lighthouse, and you guys all know that's my passion, so I was very thrilled with that one. And then after that, what we talked about was the mayor had presented us with some New Hampshire Arts Council funding through multiple grant programs, and there were a couple on there that pertain to the schools. So I forwarded that information to the chair of the school board, um, Maggie Lawson, for them to look over. And then there's one that our group will be talking to the city manager and staff about. Um, it's for community engagement grants, and w which would have to do with murals and beautifying downtown. So we'll be looking into that. And after that, we concluded our meeting. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, Councilor Messier. Yeah, thank you. Uh, March 12th, the school board met. Um, I was there. The meeting started at 7, ended about 8. Pretty much uh, the big news was they offered the superintendent's position to a John Shea. They're in negotiations for a contract. Um, so that was that. They also thanked the benefactors, last, lack of a better term, of the fundraising for the band uniforms. So they ignored, that's part of their policy to acknowledge that. And they did that. Uh, that was pretty much, uh, other than the, they were also in the process of advertising and the timeline for assistant superintendent and special ed director. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Yes, Councilor Witham. I mean, <laughs> Goodwin. <laughs> um, uh, the Island 30 uh, committee met uh, directly before this meeting this evening. Um, and we had uh, a discussion of um, onboarding, uh, sort of continuing the onboarding conversation from the last meeting uh, and allowing new members of the committee to contribute to the goal setting. Um, and uh, we are hoping to uh, have the school board nominate someone to fill the seat that is reserved for them on the committee um, as the uh, Education is one of the core tenets of the of the committee and the vision, um, and uh, look forward to fold that person in and then sort of refine our um, our goals into a sort of action list uh, with priorities and timelines. Um, sort of trying to hone in on deliverables, um, and once that's cleaned up and uh, ready for prime time, uh, we will present that to council. Thank you so much. Other reports of special committees? All right, seeing as there are no more, I will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Honor, members of co uh, council. I offer the following comments this evening under unfinished business resolution 3624 regarding authorizing the manager to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost sharing agreement and member services contract. I just point out, I uh, emailed uh, you, I believe, I did attach a hard copy of the email that I sent to all regarding liability coverage, especially on any data breach that I received from Mr. Herdin 
um, who's here today also. Under new business of the fiscal year budget, uh, 2024 to 2025, um, as I notified you last week, the city manager's proposed budget for the next fiscal year and the school department budget has been submitted in accordance with the city charter. Uh, Mayor Gerding has scheduled a public hearing for Monday, April 1st. Uh, the city's manager's budget presentation starts at 6, will start at 6 p.m. Um, I'm sure the school board will also uh, have a brief presentation regarding an overview of their budget. Uh, the budget public hearing will be posted for 7 p.m. as part of the regular council meeting. Uh, the next two ordinances are in regards to uh, the first one, 1024, amending the water ordinance, uh, changing the rates, fees, and charges to increase the water utility rates effective July 1, 2024, and July 1, 2025. And also uh, ordinance 1124, amend uh, the sewer ordinance regarding uh, sewer use volume charges, which will increase the sewer, if approved, increase the sewer volume charges effective again uh, the next two uh, years, July 1 of 24 and July 1 of 25. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, to discuss both these issues on February 21st to review possible increases to our water and sewer, sewer utility rates. The committee voted to recommend a 10% increase for both utilities. Uh, I did provide an analysis that uh, Finance Director Smith uh, completed regarding the water sewer rates that shows the estimated increases for each of the proposed two years. Um, the next uh, supplemental appropriation, uh, Ordinance 1224, again, the Finance Committee met on February 21st and voted to rec recommend the supplemental appropriation. I did provide the Council with a uh, memorandum from Director S Smith regarding this meter replacement program. Uh, for all these ordinances it, uh, listed, 924, 1024, 1124, and 1224, Your Honor, I'd recommend a uh, public hearings be scheduled for the next regular council meeting. Sounds good, if there's no objection. Under new uh, business resolutions, the first one, 4124, is in regards to authorizing the manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, opera funds, and also the cable fund uh, to contract with Brightly Software Incorporated of Cary, North Carolina for SmartGov software. Again, this was vetted through the Finance Committee at, at the February 21st meeting, who voted to support this resolution. I provided you information that was uh, spelled out in a memorandum from Director Me Michelle Mears, explaining the benefits of this online permitting software. Uh, please note that land use applications and building permit applications will still be available to be submitted as done now with uh, printing forms online or coming into the office and doing it pen or pen in hand. For those who aren't tech savvy, we'll have both uh, opp opportunity both to do it by, by paper or by uh, online. Uh, the next one, 4224, regarding uh, authorizing manager contract with fire tech and safety of New England of Winthrop, Maine for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for the fire department. Again, Finance Committee uh, voted to support this resolution, and I provide you information from our Interim Fire Chief Mark Dellner regarding utilization of the Mass State bid list we have utilized in the past. I'll run down very quickly some informational items. Uh, congressionally designated spending, CDS funding, uh, was approved for library ADA improvements and expansion. I received a call from uh, staff person Tina uh, from Senator Sheen's office last Tuesday informing me that the funding bill was approved, which will award the city $500,000 to assist in moving the library accessibility and expansion project to the next phase. City staff uh, had submitted this request. I had informed the council we were submitting it back in March of 23. Fire Department grant application attaches a summary of the FEMA grant application that uh, Chief Delner and his staff submitted that would complete the department's SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus project if it's approved. I want to thank the chief and his uh, staff for their efforts. City clerk grant application. I have approved the attached request. I provided you a memo from the city clerk's office to submit for additional Moose Plate grant funding. This will continue city efforts on our preservation of vital records. Again, I'd like to extend our, my thanks to our city clerks, Kristen and Amy, for their efforts in moving uh, this forward. 
More grants. Police Department grant application. I have approved the Police Department's grant application for congressionally directed spending funding of a little over $123,000 <coughs> to replace 30 mobile radios that are 9 to 15 years old. Uh, you got a reminder about the workshops and special meetings uh, moving forward, April 1st, the Saturday budget review, April 6th, and um, April 22nd, Monday, is a special city council meeting if it's needed, solely, uh, solely focused on the budget. That concludes uh, my comments, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brings us to agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being introduced this evening and placed in nomination. Uh, Bradley Fredette for reappointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustments with a term to expire April 2027. Uh, Nancy Mitchell for appointment to uh, the Li Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. And lastly, Sarah Roberts Terry for appointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. In accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments and nominations, uh, the nominations will remain open until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, item number 14 is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none tonight. Item 15 is unfinished business. Um, first up, resolutions. The chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 36-24 to authorize the city manager to execute the Community yeah. Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost sharing agreement member services contract and to approve the associated policies for risk, rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. City clerk. Resolution number 3624, to authorize the city manager to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost sharing agreement member services contract and to approve the associated policies for risk, risk rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. Thank you. Resolution 36-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment um, being offered, the chair will look for a motion on resolution 36-24. Councilor Witham. Move for the adoption of the resolution. Councilor Witham moves to the adoption of resolution 36-24, seconded by Councilor Messier. Um, motion for the council is to adopt resolution 36-24. Is there a discussion tonight? Yes, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I hate to characterize the resolution as administrative minutia, but that's a, a bit of what this is. It's, it's, it's just moving this ball further down the road. Uh, both the, uh, the cost sharing agreement and the member services contract are language that have been adopted by all the communities in the uh, Community Co Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Uh, so it's standard uh, boilerplate language for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, uh, it has been vetted out by many communities, not only ours, so I feel very comfortable with this. Uh, and, and I take this opportunity, and I know Mr. Herndon is here from the coalition, just to say that uh, you folks, and Henry, you in particular, have been uh, right at our side through this whole process, uh, sort of holding our hand, answering all of the questions. Uh, I know I did have a question about the you know data security and, and coverages for that. We got a very thorough response around that. So uh, that adds to the comfort level in, in moving this forward. Uh, at the end of the day, um, this is going to save uh, uh, rate payers here in the community money. Uh, it's the right thing to do, and I appreciate the support that we've gotten. So thank you. Thank you. Other discussion tonight? All right, seeing as there is no more, uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 36-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. The clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right, Resolution 36-24 has been adopted. All right, next up. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 37-24, which is to authorize the city manager to contract with N. Granice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts, to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project, which, if adopted, would contract with them for an amount not to exceed $2,176,656 for the Complete Streets construction on con Constitutional Way. City Clerk. Resolution number 3724, to authorize the city manager to contract with N. Granice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. 
Thank you. Resolution 37-24 having been read a first and second time is now open to further amendment. Yes, Councilor Goodwin. <clears throat> I'd like to make uh, a motion to amend Resolution 37-24 to include the construction of a crosswalk on the north side of Constitutional Way and High Street, the intersection of North, uh, excuse me, the north side of High Street, the, the intersection of Constitutional Way, uh, including solar powered flashing pedestrian beacons on both sides of the crosswalk and within the existing budget. So that would be funded from <coughs> contingency. Let me just write that down one second. All right. So just to repeat, make sure I have everything. Um, the amendment is to amend to include a crosswalk on the north side of High Street at the intersection of Constitutional Way and to include solar powered flashing crosswalk beacons and utilize existing funding to pay for this. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes. Seconded by Councillor Perdi Catanzaro. Discussion? Yes. Yes. Councillor Vincent. We've just gone through the whole bid process. I'm not trying to undermine your amendment. However, the right thing to do would probably be, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, would be to send it back to committee, but we're this far. So, I mean, you're talking additional $100,000 maybe or more. Uh, to do $100,000 out a bat of an eyelash, I don't think I'm in favor of that. Discussion? Yes, Councilor Witham, then Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, we did have uh, an engineering report issued to us about the, I, I guess, the pros and cons of, of, of the crosswalk uh, installation, uh, and attached to that were some cost estimates, which I think were in the mid-teens. I'll, I'll I'll use 15, 16,000, that seems to come to mind, that did not include the solar-powered rectangular rapid flash beacons that uh, are added to this amendment. I know we've installed those in the city. I'm guessing they're less than $20,000. So I, I think we're looking more in the vicinity of maybe $30,000 here, $35,000 for this uh, addition, uh, I'm guessing, uh, is the would be the ballpark pricing uh, the contingency for the project is a hundred thousand plus a little bit more than that um, I guess my question for the city manager or if we need to involve director Smith we can suspend rules is if we got to a point where the contingency was eaten up for whatever reason we had some unexpected cost or things of that nature it would then be flagged by and Grenice and city staff to come back to city council for a supplemental appropriation beyond the bond, right? So there's there's a parachute, if you will, to cover any cost that we might incur because of this. So uh, I'm not worried about the cost element. Uh, I will tell you my 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 concern with the crosswalk was sort of that visibility uh, component that the engineer flagged when you turn from constitutional way on the high street um, those fears are allayed a little bit with the, uh, the flashing beacons that are proposed here so um, i guess i have a, a bit of a comfort level with this thank you next up councillor goodwin thank you uh yeah just echoing um <clears throat> working in the construction industry, um, I would not anticipate this cost anywhere near $100,000. I think the estimate that uh, Council Witham has provided is is plenty. Um, I don't have uh, experience building s streets uh, uh, via you know public uh, the public process, so I'm not uh, exactly sure what that construction process is like. But I do undertake multi-million dollar construction projects as part of my day job and uh, they consist of design documents that are bid out and there's a contract and then you get into <clears throat> construction and things change. The owner changes their mind, um, which is in this scenario, we, the council, are the owner um, and or there are unforeseen conditions which need to be responded to. So that is why a contingency exists um, and I think this is 
by far the most efficient time to do this work. If we send it uh, back for independent design and construction, it's going to cost more because it's more mobilizations, it's a separate contract, it's gonna take forever. Um, you know, if I was on council earlier on when Constitutional Way was in design, I would have flagged this earlier in the process so that it wasn't an amendment, but that was not my timeline, so here I am. Um, I do think this is a, uh, as previously stated, a, a good value for the community. It's a crosswalk that existed historically. It is, I would argue, probably the most heavily used crosswalk and the <clears throat> most um, sort of successful portion of our, our downtown core. People are, are constantly jaywalking there, myself included. Um, so I think this is formalizing a desire path that uh, people want um, and making it safer. Um, for the concerns about <clears throat> drainage, again, I work with civil engineers all the time. Uh, it is solvable. I, I, not a civil engineer, so I haven't sat down and done the grades, but it's just a matter of making sure your grades are such that the water is sloping away from, uh, from the property behind the curb. As it is, that curb is required by code to be four to six inches above the street, so the sidewalk is already four to six inches above the street. Um, so it just from a very high level feasibility on, on you know, flooding concerns that had been previously mentioned, I'm not concerned about this the engineer is going to have to uh, design a compliant um, crosswalk which meets both the drainage and ADA um, so that is implicit in this amendment. So just to sort of speak to some of the concerns I'd heard previously, uh, I really appreciate people's support in this. I think it is a great uh, benefit to the downtown and to uh, pedestrian safety. Thank you, <coughs> other discussion? Uh, Councilor Perdi, Catanzaro, and then Councilor Goodson. Uh, yeah, two comments. One to safety. Um, I, I appreciate the flashing beacons um, to help mitigate some of the safety concerns that were raised by the engineering study that had looked at this and priced it out already. Um, I think one thing that was missed is how unsafe that other opposite crosswalk is. I think all of us know people who've almost been hit like ourselves or people who have been hit in that crosswalk because of approaching traffic to turn left onto constitutional and the traffic um, that just sort of swerves around them and, and will almost hit or hit people in that in that crosswalk. Um, so I think this crosswalk would add a lot of safety, especially for those jaywalking already. Um, and to the drainage point, I, um, I did notice that, that um, the curb in front of what's currently a pawn shop there is already cut there's already a cut there and I think it, it's been brought up before as a drainage issue and the cuts already there so um, I would agree that uh, taking the engineering um, study that's already been looked at this and that's already priced it well under the contingency um, it's a good um, savings to our taxpayers to do this now thanks thank you Councilor Vincent thank you your honor yeah, um, if um, it's going to be within what you were talking about, Council, with them about the thirty thousand or a little bit more, I can live with that. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor Messier. Yeah, let let me explain a little bit of this process. This this went out to bid. Grinnell bid on it as the bidding documents were supplied. So any change that's voted on tonight by contract has to go out for a change order there's going to have to be some engineering because Grinness isn't going to assume any liability if the water coming down Highland Street goes into a, an abutting property, especially the, the curbing across the street from the pawn shop, the pawn, pawn shop, because that was raised because the water coming down the hill was going into that building. So it's not an easy, you can vote for it, that's fine, but it's not an easy process. By contract, it is not an easy, I don't care what they do in housing for a Chimberg, this is different because you're going to have to take the calculations from the water coming down the hill and find a storm drain that that's going to go into. So you have storm drain, 
you have curbings because that curbing has to be cut for ADA. <clears throat> so, however, if it passes, fine. I'm just saying, it's not. It's most likely not going to be thirty thousand dollars. I hope I'm wrong, but I've been wrong before. So, thank you. Thank you. Other discussion on the amendment. All right. Seeing as there. Is no more. I'm going to restate the amendment just so folks know what they are voting on. Again, it's an amendment for Resolution 37-24. The amendment is to add a crosswalk on the north side of High Street at the intersection of Constitutional Way and to include uh, solar-powered flashing crosswalk beacons and to utilize existing funding for that. So, again, just to clarify, that's the motion uh, before us for this amendment. I'd like to request a roll call vote on the amendment. So requested, no, without objection, I got a second. Without objection, we'll do a roll call vote. I think that makes sense to me as well. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I will pass it over to the clerk uh, for a roll call vote. Council Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. No. Messier. No. Pepin. No. Vincent. No. Gibson? No. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? No. With him? Yes. All right. For a um, vote of six no's, three yeses, the amendment does not pass. All right. So we'll go back to our uh, resolution 37 24. Are there any other amendments that will be brought forward for us tonight? Okay, seeing no other amendments, um, the chair will look for a motion on resolution 37 24. Councilor Witham. Point of order, Your Honor. Yes. Real quick. Yeah. So I have a question on, on what we're obviously we're talking about. So was it a change? Was, was the previous motion or amendment a change to just do the light and the. And the sidewalk crossing, it, it's together, correct? There wasn't two separate things, correct? Because I was going to say maybe we could just do the light if we didn't have to play with the engineering on the uh, on the sidewalk. Is that a motion? No, it's not. It's just a just a <laughs> thinking out loud. If anybody else has any ideas, thank you. We have a motion on the resolution before us, so I'm going to throw it back to Councilor Witham. I'll move for the adoption of resolution 3724 as written. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes, Councilor Gibson. All right, motion before the council is to adopt resolution 37 24. Is there discussion? Okay, seeing as there is none, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 37 24, and this is as presented tonight, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Cotton Zero. Yes. Misho. Yes. All right. Resolution 37-24 has been adopted. All right. That will move us to Resolution 38-24. Uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 38-24, which is uh, for the city council vote to authorize a bond to construct the constitutional way complete streets project, which would allow the city to enter into a bond agreement not to exceed $2,367,256 for the construction of the complete streets project on constitutional way. City clerk. Resolution number 3824. City council vote to authorize a bond to construct the constitutional way complete streets project. All right. Resolution 38-24, having had a public hearing and been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. All right, seeing no amendment being offered, the chair will look for a motion on Resolution 38-24. Councilor Witham? Move for the adoption of the resolution. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Resolution 38-24, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Uh, motion before the council is to adopt Resolution 38-24. Is there discussion? Okay. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 38-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. 
City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right. Resolution 38-24 has been adopted. Okay, moves us to Resolution 39-24. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 39-24 to authorize the city manager to sign a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project, which, if approved, would contract with them for an amount not to exceed $190,600 for the inspection and construction engineering services for Constitutional Way. City Clerk. Resolution number 3924, to authorize the city manager to sign a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. Thank you. Resolution 39-24, having been uh, read a first and second time, is now open for further amendment. All right, no amendment being offered. Chair is looking for a motion on Resolution 39-24. Yes, Councilor Messier. I move for the adoption of Resolution 3924. Councillor Messier moves for the adoption of Resolution 3924, seconded by Councillor Cameron. Um, motion for the Council is to adopt Resolution 3924. Discussion. Okay, seeing none. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 3924, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? <coughs> yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right. Resolution 39-24 has been adopted. All right. That moves us to agenda item 16, which is new business. We start off with our ordinances. Our first up is uh, ordinance 9-24. Your Honor? Yes. I'd like to suspend council rules to read by title only for perhaps <laughs> obvious reasons. Second. Right, there's a motion to read by title only by Councilor uh, Witham, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Uh, if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? All right. The ayes have it. The ayes... Uh, uh, I appear to have it, the eyes have it, and uh, the motion is adopted. So we will now read by title only, which I think makes perfect sense since nobody wants to sit through the entirety of the budget, <laughs> or at least yet. <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah, wherever. So uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 9-24, which is our fiscal year 2024-2025 budget. Uh, City Clerk. Ordinance number 924, fiscal year 2024-2025 budget. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Witham. Again, I'd like to suspend Council rules this time for a second reading on the ordinance. All right. Councilor Witham makes a motion to suspend Council rules for a second <coughs> reading on Ordinance uh, 9-24. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, question for the Council is the suspension of Council rules to have a second reading tonight on Ordinance 9-24. I'll open it up to the discussion if anyone has it. But. Seeing none. Uh, if you're in favor of the motion, again, you will state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you will state by saying no. So, if you are in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Okay. Are you, if you are opposed, please state by saying no. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a bit of confusion. You're not sure. Again, this is a, uh, and that might have been on me. I'll take, I'll take that one. Again, just to make clear, well, you're going to do this again. The motion is to suspend rules to allow for a second reading on Ordinance 9-24, which would then open it up so that it could be laid upon the table. Again, this is something I mentioned in my mayor's report. Um, I think I was unclear about the motion part, so just want to make that clear. We're going to do the vote again, just because it seemed like it was unclear. Um, if you are in favor of the motion, you will say by saying aye. 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 Thank you. If you are opposed, you will say by saying no. OK, seeing that the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, the motion passes. Your Honor, uh, I'd like to move that we place the ordinance on the table. All right. <laughs> Um, do we need to have the second reading first? I would think oh, yes. we should we should have that read, and then we'll do, we'll get to that. So thank you. Do you mind rescinding your motion? I, I rescind. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Read in full? Uh, no, just by title. <laughs> so the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Ordinance 9-24, which is the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget. City Clerk. 
Ordinance number 924, fiscal year 2024-2025 budget. Thank you. Now that it has been read a first and second time, are there other motions tonight? Councilor Witham. Yes, I'd like to move that we place the ordinance on the table. All right, Councilor, <laughs> Councilor Witham moves that ordinance 9-24 uh, will be placed upon the table, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion? Non-debatable. <laughs> yeah, true, good point. Uh, see, I'm learning these things, I didn't know that. Um, so again, the motion before the council is to lay ordinance 9-24 on the table. Just for clarification purposes, we're gonna do a roll call vote without, op without uh, any opposition. So if you're in favor of laying ordinance 9-24 on the table, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. No. Parody Cantonzero. Yes. Michaud. Yes. All right. Thank you. Ordinance 9-24 has been laid upon the table. All right. We will get to that one very, very soon, I, I do promise. All right. Next up, under new business, remember we're in new business, is Ordinance 10-24. Everyone good? Okay. Chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 10-24 to amend Chapter 32, Water Ordinance, by amending Section 16.1.A, titled Rates, Fees, and Charges, to increase the water utility rates effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025. City Clerk. Ordinance Number 1024, to amend Chapter 32, Water Ordinance, by amending Section 16.1.A, titled Rates, Fees, and Charges, to increase the water utility rates effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025, March 18, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 32, Section 16.1.A, titled Rates, Fees, and Charges, by deleting the second paragraph in its entirety and replace it with the following. All water users will be charged a rate of $5.94 per 100 cubic feet of water used beginning July 1, 2024, $6.53 per 100 cubic feet of water used beginning July 1, 2025. Background. By passage of this ordinance, the City Council is increasing the water use volume charge 10% effective July 1, 2024 and 10% effective July 1, 2025. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 10-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next uh, scheduled meeting. Uh, Chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 11-24 to amend Chapter 8A sewer ordinance by amending uh, charges Article 15, Section 7.B, titled Sewer Use Volume Charges to increase the sewer volume charges effective July 1st, 2024, July 1st, 2025. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1124, to amend Chapter 8A, Sewer Ordinance, by amending Charges Article 15, Section 7.B, titled Sewer Use Volume Charges to increase the sewer volume charges effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025, March 18, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 8A, Article 15, Section 7.B, titled Sewer Use Volume Charges, by deleting it in its entirety and replace it with the following. All sewer us users will be charged at a rate of $8.83 per 100 cubic feet of water used beginning July 1, 2024, $9.75 per 100 cubic feet of water used be beginning July 1, 2025. Background. By passage of this ordinance, the City Council is increasing the sewer use volume charge 10% effective July 1, 2024 and 10% effective July 1, 2025. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Your Honor. Yes. Can I ask a question on that? Absolutely. Uh, 100 cubic feet is 750 gallons, correct? I don't know the conversion. Well, and the reason why I asked the question, I see, yes, it's kind of funny, but people that don't home don't know what 100 cubic feet is. So if we could ask, is it 750 gallons, Mike? 
Okay. Okay, so 750 gallons, that's what it's going to go up to. Thank you. Thank you for humoring me. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Ordinance 11-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 12-24, supplemental appropriation for additional funding needed for a water meter replacement program. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1224, supplemental appropriation for additional funding needed for the water meter replacement program, March 18, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that pursuant to Section 7.7A of the City Charter, the annual budget for the City of Summersworth for fiscal year 2023-2024 is amended as follows. Appropriate $75,000 from the Water Fund budget and appropriate $50,000 from the Sewer Fund budget as follows. Water Fund original budget, $3,236,505, amendment $75,000, Revised Water Fund Budget, $3,311,505. Sewer Fund Original Budget, $4,183,996. Amendment, $50,000. Revised Sewer Fund Budget, $4,233,996. Approved as to funding, Scott A. Smith, Director of Finance and Administration. Recorded by Kristen LePan, City Clerk. Background. This ordinance appropriates additional funding to complete the residential meter replacement program. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. This ordinance requires a public hearing and requires a two-thirds majority vote of the City Council after the public hearing, subject to Section 7.4.1 and Section 7.7A of the City Charter. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 12-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Brings us to our resolutions under new business tonight. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for our first reading on resolution 41-24 to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund to contract with Brightly Softwares Inc. of Cary, North Carolina for smart gov software for the de uh, Department of Developmental Services. City Clerk. Resolution number 4124, to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund to contract with Brightly Software Inc. of Cary, North Carolina for SmartGov software. March 18, 2024, whereas the city, excuse me, whereas the Summersworth Capital Improvement Program for fiscal years 2025-2030 includes a project to provide online permitting software for use by the Department of Development Services and whereas city staff researched qualified companies and requested and received demonstrations from a number of these software companies that provide similar products. And whereas after reviewing products available, city staff determined that SmartGov by Brightly Software of Cary, North Carolina provides a platform that best meets the needs of the city with an initial cost of $48,386. And whereas the Finance Committee reviewed this recommendation with city staff and recommends the city contract with Brightly Software for SmartGov software for an amount not to exceed $48,386. And whereas the Finance Committee also recommends the city fund this contract using available funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund to contract with Brightly Software from, for SmartGov software for an amount not to exceed $48,386 and to take any and all other action relative to this purchase determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Resolution 41-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 42-24 to authorize the city manager to contract with FireTech and Safety of New England of Winthrop, Maine, for purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for the fire department. City Clerk. Resolution number 4224 to authorize the city manager to contract with FireTech and Safety of New England of Winthrop, Maine, for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for the fire department, March 18, 2024. Whereas the Summersworth Capital Improvement Program for fiscal years 2024-2029 contains a recommendation to replace all self-contained breathing apparatus used by the fire department 
over a four-year period. And whereas the fiscal year 2023-2024 adopted budget contains an appropriation for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus representing the first year of this program. And whereas Fire Tech and Safety of New England is a certified vendor for self-contained breathing apparatus on the Massachusetts state bid list. And whereas city staff recommends purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus from Fire Tech and Safety of New England utilizing the Massachusetts state bid list at a cost not to exceed $108,000. And whereas the Finance Committee reviewed this recommendation with city staff and recommends the city contract with Fire Tech and Safety of New England for an amount not to exceed $108,000. And, and now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to contract with Fire Tech and Safety of New England of Winthrop, Maine for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for the Fire Department at an amount not to exceed $108,000 and take any and all other actions relative to this purchase determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councillors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved city attorney. Councillor Witham. Yes, I'd like to move to suspend council rules to act on this resolution. I second that. Councillor Witham makes a motion to suspend council rules for a second reading on resolution 42-24, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Uh, so again, question before the council is suspension of council rules for a second reading on resolution 42-24 uh, discussion. Yes, Councillor Messier. I just want to make a comment. Um, I don't know why we didn't do this for the prior one. It's the same thing it's been on, but <clears throat> I'm going to vote no because I don't see that why we need to hurry. Uh, we had two individuals here from the planning department on the prior one. And I thought we were going to do the same for both. So I'll be voting no, but I will be voting to approve it. Yeah, thank you. Councilor Witham. Yeah, my only notion in suspending rules here is just knowing the long lead time uh, to get this equipment. It can be uh, years sometimes, so it's important to get in the queue. I'll, I'll give them that. Okay. <laughs> Other discussion? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. 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 All right. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. No. All right. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion passes. So, Chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 42 24. Resolution number 42 24. To authorize the city manager to contract with Fire Tech and Safety of New England of Winthrop, Maine for the purchase of self contained breathing apparatus for the fire department. All right, resolution 42-24, having been read a first and now second time, is open to amendment. Is there an amendment? Yes. Oh, oh no? sorry. Okay. No. <laughs> no amendment being offered. Uh, Chair will look for a motion on resolution 42-24. Councillor Vincent? I make, a motion. I make a motion to move on. All right, Councillor Vincent uh, makes a motion to adopt resolution 42-24, uh, seconded by uh, Councillor Pepin. So again, motion before the council is the adoption of resolution uh, 42-24, discussion. Yes, Councillor Gibson. The reason why I voted to not suspend rules to vote this a second time is, sorry, to read it a second time. Uh, I've always had a problem with suspending the rules to move votes for it. I understand the urgency issue with it, but I wonder why we get placed in this situation of having to rush through to get something approved uh, when it seems like if you're going to be buying apparatus, that's something you knew about quite a while ago. Just my opinion on the subject. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Perdy, Captain Zero. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share why I'm in support of this and at the um, accelerated pace. Um, I learned on the Public Safety Committee that this was funds that were able to be repurposed from um, some other funds that were available, I think, for the tower, um, and that we got approved to cover this. Um, so it was something that, you know, through regular means would not have had the opportunity to get it this soon. So that's why I'll be supporting this tonight. Thank Thanks. you. Councillor Witham. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I do believe that they were able to 
repurpose those funds for the tower, not for this, though. This is a budgeted item. Um, in my notion on suspending council rules with a budgeted item, it's already made its way through the budget process, so council has already endorsed the expenditure. Um, as we all know, we, uh, the, our prior fire chief resigned. Uh, the current fire chief stepped in and immediately began working on the acquisition of several items allocated for the fire department in the budget, this being one of them. He's got it to us, uh, in front of us. Uh, sure, could wait another two weeks, uh, but I know this stuff is just one of those items that takes time to get. Thank you. Other discussion? Okay. Seeing uh, no more, uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 42-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right. Resolution 42-24 has been adopted. All right. That brings us to agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings in accordance with Council Rules 7-C. The time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect as long as the mayor remembers it, unless the council wishes to suspend rules. Uh, speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, uh, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? All right, anyone who wishes to speak? All right, thank you. Um, next is item 18, closing comments by Council members, we will start. Who wants to go first? Council Weather? Okay. Let's go with you. You're up. <laughs> I just decided. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, not much tonight. A, a bit of a shout out. Uh, this past Saturday, uh, we uh, were able to uh, get a small group of uh, folks to uh, get the uh, ball field ready for play uh, this season. Um, I can honestly say I don't think we've ever had it playable this early. Uh, ever before. I, I don't know as though we've ever been able to step on that field in March. So this is highly unusual. Uh, I don't know what it means. I won't go there, but it's just uh, unusual. Uh, and a big shout out to a, a local business, Patriot Tractor. Uh, they loaned uh, us a commercial uh, sort of leaf blower, which helped us to uh, uh, clear the field of debris. There weren't a million pine cones, there wasn't one. Uh, and uh, there was a fair amount of dog, dog droppings on the field as well. Uh, that, that leaf blower moved those uh, equally as well. So uh, a big shout out to Patriot Tractor. That, that saved us from having to rent something and just saved a lot of time. Uh, giving shout outs to organizations, I can also give a shout out to the Summersworth Women's Club on the Summersworth Festival Association. They've both contributed towards uh, a new sound system for the field. Uh, as you know, Eric Momsen is our voice of Summersworth sports here in the city, uh, and our sound system up there has failed. Uh, so we are uh, uh, on our way towards funding that project. Uh, we still have a ways to go. Uh, hopefully we can uh, get the funding before the season starts. So uh, just a plea out there to the community. So my public service announcement for the night. Thanks. Thank you so much. Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> wanted to uh, provide a reminder for folks that the next <clears throat> uh, Economic Development Committee meeting is going to be held on April 11th. And in lieu of a normal meeting, we are hosting a community, <clears throat> community workshop to get feedback from folks on the one Winter Street property. Um, so that's uh, April 11th at 7 p.m. here in council chambers. So I would appreciate folks uh, coming out to um, contribute their ideas. Uh, I'm going to be uh, prepping some feasibility analysis just for discussion purposes. Um, uh, but definitely want to hear what, you know, what folks envision for the, the site and uh, help the committee um, make a recommendation to council on how to move forward. Um, I'd also guess I'd just state that, you know, I'm a little disappointed with the uh, vote on the sidewalk amendment this evening. Um, I, I guess I was optimistic that it was low hanging fruit for uh, improving pedestrian safety in the downtown, supporting businesses in the downtown, supporting 
Uh, one of the issues that I think is, uh, contributes to the, our perception of a parking problem, which is traffic calming and safe paths to available parking. Um, it, I, if not now, when? You know, I, I don't know when we are going to go back to the drawing board. We're not going to have a separate engineering process and bid process for this crosswalk. So I assume this is uh, the council saying they don't care and they, this is not a priority for them. Um, but it says a lot about our priorities, um, I think, in the, in the downtown. And I think this would have been, if not uh, completely within the contingency, um, I, you know, if, it would have cost minimal uh, extra dollars. So I'm just a little disappointed that we didn't take that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Joanna. Um, Earth Day is Monday, April 22nd. So why am I bringing this up? Because uh, Don't Trash Summersworth kicks off on April 20th, a couple days before Earth Day. And I'm very excited about this. We are going to meet at the lower parking lot of Home Depot, and our first area of cleanup will be around the Woolland Warming Center, um, the little, um, ha is it Handle, Handle Street, Handle Drive right there on the right, and um, the road going out to the Woolland Warming Center. So it's only an hour of your time, one hour, two to three, on Saturday, April 20th, and we'll see how much trash we can pick up. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Councillor Messier. Thank you. Um, I, ju I just want a, a shout out to Rye Beach Landscaping for the destruction of the hotel. That was quite a thing. They pulled that roof down without and no walls going out into Elm Street. I mean, that roof part with a shingles that just slid in so whoever the engineer for rye beach they did a good job um i a friend of mine was standing there we were taking bets if the wall was going to go to elm street and miss a school board meeting or whatever but it did so i mean they didn't hit the wire and blow a transformer but those things happen and um it's nice to see three or four old dilapidated buildings, eyesores torn down. Hopefully Mr. Stebbins can do a good job on that building. Um, and I was also happy to read or hear that the solar array on the landfill may be coming to fruition. So, I mean, that's a long time coming. And the other, third one I was going to bring up is the heat in this room. All of a sudden now we're getting heat at the end of the meeting. I mean, I'm over here freezing. If, no, I, cold, if I need to wear a coat, can somebody let me know? Are we that poor that we have to keep the heat at 60? I mean, come on. I'm here for an hour or two. I mean, enough. Um, Tell them to dress up. And then when, if somebody can get back to me about, I thought there was going to be a meeting for parking downtown because I have a property owner, business owner, that would like to come along and offer some suggestion. He did offer to buy some property and tear a building down and build a parking lot, but I, I don't know if he found one yet, but if there's a meeting coming up, could somebody let me know so I can let Ed, no, and go with them. So, thank you. Thank you. Next step. Wait a minute. I do have one other. All right. You, <laughs> you can go. It's fine. Yes, go I ahead. Do. Yes, I do. I mean, the gentleman tonight gave a shout out to our employees in this building. And I'd just like to echo that, as well as police, fire. One thing about this community, we do have some very good employees and that like to take care of people. The planning department, I was at some places this weekend and a shout out to the director and everybody in that building as well as the gentleman expressed, Mr. Connolly. So across the hallway to the ladies that work downstairs across the way, 
Everybody does a great job. And as one, I appreciate that. So thank, thank them all. Thank you. Next up, Councillor Pepin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I know my blood pressure has come down a little bit since the opening of the meeting, so uh, hopefully I can keep it down a little bit here. Uh, I, I'd just like to clarify a little bit of my thoughts, especially to you, Mayor, so when you go to the council and stuff like this. I think every life is very, very precious, and I, that, that is number one. Rather, it's homeless, someone addicted to drugs, or, or whatever the situation. I think the people that are running the homeless shelter are doing an excellent job at, at what they have to work with. Um, my biggest problem out of this whole deal is that they're probably doing too good of a job because they're drawing people from all around. And I think this they've grown out of the, the facility. I don't think the facility is adequate for them. I, and, and other things are is that there's other communities, and I was using their records when I said these other towns and communities, um, are getting a free ride. And I don't think Stratford County even cares about Somersworth and, and Dover and Rochester, and as long as they're paying, they don't really care. So as long as we build it, they will come, which I, I expect, and I don't expect any homeless person not to come. And I don't really care if they come from Exeter, Dover, or Rochester, or, or wherever they come from, they're homeless. They should be taken care of, all right? But I don't think it's, it should be on the taxpayers, at least, all the portion, all in the city of Summersworth that we end up giving. I know it's not all of it. I know Dover and Rogers contributes, but I just see it getting bigger and bigger. And that's, that's where I'm having a problem with. I mean, you, we see it nationally wise through the border that communities are, are getting overwhelmed from people coming to our country. And I hate to say it, but it's gonna end, if we keep the gates open here in Summersworth at the homeless shelter, it's going to get overwhelming again. I, I think the numbers are going to outmatch what we can support without some help. I don't know how else to turn around and get the word out to other people that they have to, ch they have to chime in and, and do something also. It shouldn't be just left up to three communities. There's where my problem is. My problem is not with, with the people that are running the organization and my hat's off to them. I think they do a great job and, and everything else. My, my problem is, is that when you have people from other Rockingham country, Exeter and Portsmouth, uh, uh, sh uh, funneling people this way, that's where my problem is. It's not with the homeless shelter, it's not with the homeless people, it's not with the people that have addictions. Uh, like I say, my, my main effort is, is that I love to see everybody be able to have a healthy life and be able to live in this country peacefully and whatever. But there's a time, I, uh, it's like everybody says, this is a problem that's a lot bigger than what we can cure. And I, I just want to make sure that the taxpayers of Somersworth, I guess what that's what bothers me is that I started off on this city council, our roads were in, in shambles, and then I get a, a, a person say, don't put any money into the roads, give it to the homeless people. You know, and, and you give a good presentation here tonight of what we're accomplishing in this community and how we're trying to make it proud. Well, roads are part of it. People, people. I mean, I listened to it when I first got on this council. High Street was a mess. I mean, people wanted us to pay for their repairs on their cars coming down High Street. Uh, I've heard that comment before. So you, you bust your chops off trying to make someone's work proud and have people proud of it. And, and then you some people just throw it back at you and, and my emotions got a little over, over over what I could handle at the time. So I apologize for my whatever I said. I hope, especially when someone cries out there, um, I don't know what I said to upset her, but I, I really didn't mean to upset anybody and I apologize for that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. The first thing, uh, I'll take the easiest thing first. <clears throat> uh, Dave, you need some money for your surround sound system or whatever over there, the speaker system for the uh, baseball field. I do recall one year, Hilltop Fireworks, somebody went over there and let some fireworks off in your field, and you were upset. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is this, Dave. You just tell me how much money you need, and Hilltop Fireworks will go ahead and take good care of your surround your system, okay? So there, don't, don't even think no more about it. Be happy. 
A shout out to the new restaurant in town down at the uh, plaza, Vietnamese Kitchen. Let me just say this. <laughs> it's the real deal. It is absolutely fantastic. I think it's called Pet Vietnamese Kitchen. It's awesome. You have to try it. Uh, Councilor Goodwin, um, I just think that um, on this crosswalk thing, I think the decision was that um, the unknown of the engineering. But I, listen, if you can, if you can have a side talk with the city manager and someone can guarantee that it's only going to be thirty thousand dollars maybe you can bring it back up i don't know if that's legal or not legal in the council but i do believe that those crossing uh lights are actually something very very important they really are and it is a small amount um i just hate to see the project held up and being brought back but with that being said you know maybe there's another way around it and my last comment is this. I contacted the city manager last week about backflow, backflow preventers. And he has accommodated me 100%, sending me the ordinance, uh, the water ordinance, and so forth. I have a problem with backflow testing. Uh, first of all, backflow, if we, if some of you may know and some of you may not know, it's a device that's put on our water system in case of something that comes into our house, goes back into the system and contaminates it and makes us all sick. So the current ordinance says that <clears throat> we will test twice a year. Well, I own Hilltop Fireworks, and it says that all businesses will be tested. But there's some the, the ordinance needs to be tweaked, so I'm going to work with um, the city manager on trying to get a better some better wording on the ordinance. It, it's high hazard, moderate, and or medium and low hazard. But they're all clumped in one big bunch. So why am I concerned? Well, because I own a business in town, and I have three backflows on one on one business. And basically, I own a fireworks store that has a toilet and a sink. There's no hazard there. But according to the, the ordinance, I have to pay it. So, so New England Backflow comes to my location twice a year and charges me $135 a pop times three. Well, they came in on December 18th, roughly. Then they came back on January 23rd, roughly. Uh, I just think that is not right. I just don't like it. I think it's gouging. I wouldn't want it to. And, and listen, let's forget me, okay? Okay, I have it. But how about the other business that's struggling and don't have it? And it, it, it upsets me. I don't like it at all. So I'm going to try to work uh, and try to figure this out because it's just, it's just not right. They came in 20-something days later, and they charged us again. How much could have gone wrong in 20-something days? It's just I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to change the Summersworth area twice a year on January and then July 1st. Look, I don't care. It doesn't do anybody any benefit to test me 20 days and then charge me. They don't care. City, city really doesn't. I'm not going to say that the city doesn't care because they do. But it's another city's problem because the city don't pay it. I do. Or the, or the businesses. So uh, it's one of these things we want to work on. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Just to clarify on the vote on the addition of the crosswalk component to the contract, I listened to what Mr. Messier had to say about the possible complications of doing that as far as engineering and so forth. And I understand completely. No firm is going to accept the possibility of liability without doing a comprehensive engineering study to guarantee that it doesn't exist. Whether it's really needed or not, I don't know. But I sure as hell would be doing it if it was my company. That's why I voted no. Um, if it's a worthwhile thing, you can do, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, an add-on after the fact, get it priced out, separate from your initial contract, 
and go from there. But that's not up to me. Anyways, um, I drove by uh, Elm Street to just check out what it looked like there. And I had a thought occur to me. I remember all the moaning that was done by different people in the city about the consequences of urban renewal in the 60s. And that was the first thought that struck my mind was, yeah, the buildings needed to go. They were a hazard. To be replaced by a beautiful black parking lot, that's a hell of an improvement facing right onto Washington Street and the downtown. And somebody's just talking about adding another parking lot downtown. Let's repeat the mistakes of the past. I just do not understand why people are so gung-ho to do the same stupid stuff over again. Um, I think one of the things that we need to also look at is revising whatever ordinance apply to the different zoning and the historic commission that requires that if you're in a situation that constitutes infill, if you tear a building down, you got to replace it with a building. I mean, well, I don't want to go where I'm heading right now. So, and I do want to follow up on what other people have said. I think we have an excellent group of people working for the city, City Hall, all the first responders, public works. They all do a great job, and they're all very pleasant to deal with. I can't remember a time in my... I don't want to say how many years I've lived in Summersworth <laughs> that uh, I had an issue with any of them that couldn't be resolved in an amicable way. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you, Art, for coming out. Uh, welcome officially belated to Summersworth, and thank you so much for sparking all of us to join you in talking about how awesome our city staff is. Um, it's wonderful also that you've had such good um, communication with our code enforcement officer. I know that's a that's a really tough job, as you pointed out. So thank you um, for speaking up earlier. Um, I definitely have not given up on the crosswalk. I don't know. Um, administratively how we could still include it in this one um, but just to remind everyone we did do an engineering study already um, we had it scoped out we had it priced already um, as part of this and therefore I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to move it along um, and if we can do it as part of this then it won't come with its own additions and contingencies as I'm sure it will if we try to do it all by itself um, so I'm hopeful that with a little bit more information we can <coughs> move forward and make that happen um, <coughs> excuse me um, I did also just want to um, thank again the folks that came out at the beginning and just say how inspired I am at being able to look at this as a bottom-up approach and really looking at our local leaders who are leading the way in this and, you know, starting by continuing with what we have that's working really well and is really successful. And I look forward to um, those bigger conversations down the line as well. Thanks. Thank you so much. And lastly, Councillor Mishu. You know, thank you. I wasn't going to say anything this evening, but I have to. On that crosswalk on uh, High Street and uh, Constitutional Way, wasn't it already vetted out in traffic safety at least once since I'm on council, if not twice? And I thought it came out of committee saying that's not a good spot for it. I voted no because of what came out of the traffic safety. But if somebody actually wants to put solar-powered lights on the existing crosswalk there, I have no problem with it. 
So if we want to do something like that, I'm all in favor. And for the gentlemen, gentlemen that came out and uh, thanked the city employees and the staff downstairs, thank you very much. Very rarely you hear people complimenting and thanking our employees downstairs. They are amazing. I personally like to thank them. It's joy to walk into City Hall downstairs to pay your water bill. People on both sides, they're all C and they all wave into me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Very friendly. So keep up the good work. People are noticing it. And people are coming up to me at least a couple times since I've been on council complimenting how festive it is downstairs during the holidays, how you guys like competition on each side, how you decorate. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hold on. Jumping ahead. Uh, next up is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings? All right. I will request that traffic safety look into the utility of solar powered flashing crosswalk beacons at that intersection. So please make sure at the next meeting that makes it on the agenda. Um, seeing there's no others, we're going to go to number. Yes, sir. You have another? Go for it. Well, as I mentioned in my comment, I don't know who is the appropriate people, but I would like to have them look at um, some kind of ordinance pertaining to infill. I think it's a good one. I think that that might be best suited for the joint commission between the historic district and city council. I think that that is a new committee that has yet to meet, but that might be a good task for them. So I'm going to task it out to them if that works for you. Great. All right. Other future agenda items? All right. Uh, seeing none, number 20 is non public. We have none. 21 is adjournment. Councilor Vincent moves that the City Council stand in adjournment until the next regularly scheduled meeting, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Uh, the question before the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, state by saying no. No. All right. Oh, <laughs> I just have it. <laughs> we are adjourned.